Christy. You have a good relationship with CC. Hearing that he's not going to be on the roster for the ALDS, what's your reaction and, and feelings about that? That's my first time hearing about it, actually. Um, that's tough to hear, but we got a lot of baseball to play. You know, hopefully our road doesn't end here, you know, in the DS. You know, hopefully he gets a chance to, you know, pitch in the CS or the World Series, you know. But first of all, our, you know, our main focus is Minnesota, so we got to get through that first. But that's that's tough to hear, you know, since, you know, CeCe's been such a, you know, he's been a leader of this clubhouse, leader of this team for so many years. And, you know, his fire and energy that he shows on a daily basis when he takes the ball and takes the mound is something that has kind of, you know, wore off on a lot of us. You know, it kind of defines our team is you now the grit and, you know, determination CC shows. So that's that's tough to hear, but um, you know, we got a lot of ball to play. So, okay. Aaron back right, James. Hey, Aaron, uh, w just what do you think of like the the way home runs have been such a huge part of the game nowadays, especially going up against a team that set a record for home runs, one more than you guys, and especially the way in the playoffs home runs, um, you know, seem to almost like they there've been more of them in recent years. Yeah, just recently, I just feel like um, the game's changed in that aspect. You know, I feel like, you know, there's so many shifts and there's so many different things going on in the game. Why would I want to put the ball on the ground? And, you know, for the most part, 99% of the time, it's on the ground, it's an out. So uh, I just feel like hitters have really changed their mindset. And, you know, I'm going to try to do some damage. I'm going to try to get my A swing off as many times as I can instead of trying to take a B or C swing and just put it on the ground. And, you know, it's an out. You know, why not? I got three three strikes. Why not, you know, take three chances to get one out of the park? So I think that's just going to change the game. And, um, yeah, as, you, as you guys have seen in the wild card game so far, you know, home run's going to play a big part of it. Um, a little tougher with better pitching, you know, as we see in the postseason, but it's that's what's happening now in the game, man, home runs, you know. So we're going to see a lot of them, I think, this series, and um, maybe not. We'll see, but um, it's going to be a fun series. Okay. Eric, over on the corner right here. Aaron, what's most impressed you about Paxton this season? Um, just besides, well, the, the biggest thing is he's the best left-handed pitcher in the game, you know, in my opinion, uh, just based on the stuff he has. And then, you know, just his bulldog mentality on the mound, you know, that's the one thing I felt was missing early on in the year. You know, I saw it early when I think we played Boston at home for the first series, you know, you saw, you know, a little glimpse of it. And then, uh, a little bit later on the season, whenever he needed a big game, he, he really showed up for us. But I think most recently in the past month or so has just been, mentality for him he's always had the stuff he's always had the good fastball get it up to 98 99 at times good little cutter slider big breaking ball but I think just going out there with the mindset that you're the best left-handed pitcher in the game you know that's what I started noticing the past month and I'm like wow this is this is what I was expecting when we made the news of making the trade for you know packs in the offseason was to get an ace get a guy like this that's going to go out there and every time he steps on the mound it's we're, we're winning this game you know so uh the biggest, the biggest thing I've noticed with Paxton is just his mindset. Man, he's he's an animal out there. That's what he's shown the past couple starts, and uh, I think that's what's going to help us, you know, going into the playoffs, especially, you know, in hostile environments, big situations. Man, I feel like that's that's when Paxton shows up the most. Yeah. Aaron in the back left here. Aaron, when, when uh, the Twins and Yankees played earlier this season in Minneapolis, that crazy 14-12 game that ended with the Hicks catch in center field. After that game, you said we'll see each other again. Is this what you had envisioned when you said that? Like these two teams would make a heck of a playoff series? Yeah, definitely. Just, uh, I don't know if they were first in the central at the time. I think either the Indians or them where they were back and forth, but I knew just the type of offense they have and the pitching they have, they were going to, you know, make a push for the postseason and be here. And just throughout that whole series, it was back and forth with homers, great plays, great pitching performances, back and forth. And it just gave you that playoff, playoff feel early on in the season. And, um, I just knew. I was like, I knew we were going to come back and see these guys eventually. I didn't know if it'd be in the DS, CS, or what, but uh, that's a great ball club over there. You know, we got a great ball club ourselves, so I knew eventually we crossed paths. So it's, I'm excited for the series. You know, if that, if those couple games in in Minnesota were just a taste of what's to come, it's going to be a, it's going to be an exciting series. Okay, George on the right. Aaron, at any time since you dove on your shoulder, do you think there'd be a possibility you wouldn't be ready for this? Uh, yeah, it creeps into your mind when you first, you know, dive and kind of jar things up. But, you know, once I started playing again, once I was back in the lineup, swinging, throwing, everything feels fine. It was, I knew, I knew I was going to be fine. You know, there's always a scare. You know, I got two seventy six seven, you know, falling on the ground. It's, 
a big impact. But uh, no, we're feeling good. No, so there was never a doubt once I started, you know, moving around again. Uh, Sweeney in the front. Aaron, next man up is a good rallying cry for a regular season, but is there a certain feeling with this group now that you're mostly whole and healthy heading into the most important games? Say that one more time. So you, uh, Next man up is a yeah. philosophy that plays well in the regular season, but is there a certain feeling with your group now uh, in the clubhouse that you're mostly whole and healthy heading into these most important games? Yeah, yeah, we're going to be healthy. We're going to be, you know, we're still missing a couple guys. I know Edwin and a couple guys are coming back, but um, – I still like that next man up mentality. You know, to be honest, you can kind of translate it to, you know, if I go up there in a big situation, I'll get the job done. I know I got the guy behind me that's going to step up and, you know, fill that hole and fill that role, you know. So I think the next man up mentality is still going to play for us in the postseason. And to be honest, you never know what's going to happen in the postseason. You never wish for injuries or wish for anything to happen. But guys to get hurt, and I think guys are continuing to step up for this team. This is what this team's about. You know, we've already – you know, face so much adversity uh, throughout the year. But um, no, I like that next man up. You know, it's, it kind of fits this team. I think it's going to fit us going into the postseason. Okay. Uh, right behind Sweeney. Aaron, uh, we see young players across the game, you know, making impacts, Soto, Acuna. Uh, how important has Glaber's consistency been over the last year and a half at that at that age? Wow. I, I've uh, I've never seen anything like, like Glaber, you know, especially at – at his age, 22, to be doing what he's doing in the big leagues is something that's unheard of. You know, when I was 22, I was playing in, in A ball in <laughs> Charleston, South Carolina, you know, and not nearly on the biggest stage or facing, you know, the best arms and best, biggest situations in, in the world. But um, now he's, he's going to be huge for us going down this stretch, you know, especially getting a taste of the postseason last year, you know, the wild card game, playing in uh, four games in the division series against Boston. You know, I think. You know, a lot of big moments throughout the year I look back, you know, playing the Dodgers, you know, big games against Boston. You know, Glaber always stepped up, always had a big three-run homer, you know, made a play on defense, you know, did something big for us. So I, f I feel like this postseason we're going to see something special out of, out of GT, man. He's going to – he's going to – because you saw it all year. You know, he come up with big homers, come up with great plays. You know, it didn't matter if he's playing second or short. Um, he always did something to kind of wow you, you know. And I remember back when he was a rookie, you know, and he was kind of going off. I was talking to – um I think it was Brett Gardner, and I told him, hey, man, you're you're looking at the rookie of the year right here. And then little I know, you know, Miguel Andujar is going to have put up the same numbers in great year two and won it. But uh, I just saw something special in, you know, the way he played. And he's always trying to learn. He's always trying to work. Um, and consistently, you know, he's always there for his teammates. It doesn't matter if he's 0 for 4 or 4 for 4. He's going to have everybody's back and just try to, you know, have a moment and have an impact on the game. So we're going to see something special out of him, I know, this postseason. Okay. Marley in the center. Aaron, you talked about the – Red Sox celebrating at the stadium as just great disappointment last year. You talked about Game Seven in Houston, also losing that ALCS as a mo I'm sorry, not moving on as a motivator. How much is disappointment a motivator for you these playoffs? Well, in, any year you don't, you're not the last man standing. You know the season's a fail. You know it doesn't matter how many games you won in the postseason. You can win every single game in the regular season, but if you lose in the postseason, it don't matter. You know so. Uh, you know, each year that left a bad taste in my mouth, especially Game 7 in Houston. Uh, game 4 here at home, you know, losing on our home turf uh, to an AL East, you know, rivals. Never a good taste going into offseason, but a lot of guys, you know, that, that that keeps us hungry. You know, that's how I kind of always saw it was, you know, we're we're getting closer, we're getting to learn. And the biggest thing is, my, my biggest motivator and biggest lessons I've learned is always from failure. You know, failing, you know, I just think back to a lot of those games and, in 18 of, you know, the little things, you know, the little things that we missed out on, the little details that we missed that, you know, might not affect a certain play now, but affect us later in the game or affect us something later on. And I think that's what this team in 2019 is really capitalized on is doing the little things, you know, doing the little things right each and every day, you know, on defense, you know, running the bases um, in the box, you know, controlling the zone. That's something that Booney always talks about, controlling the zone. I feel like, you know, when you do the little things, you know, you're going to, going to be the championship team you're going to be a better team so um yeah failure is that's a tough pill to swallow but um it's can always be one of your biggest motivators okay we'll take a few more mark over to your right <clears throat> excuse me aaron when you think back to your first postseason experience and your second this is going to be Giancarlo's second time here how do you think having done this last year will help him this year in terms of being more comfortable and sort of knowing what to expect it's just like a, just like taking a test. Um, 
you know, first year is like a practice test where you go through the motions, your first time into it, you know, you kind of get, because I remember in 17 for Minnesota, that wild card game, you know, I could sit up here and say I wasn't nervous, but I was nervous, you know, excited. Uh, but I think just, you know, after you get a couple games in and, you know, get that feeling of what the postseason's about, you know, you just kind of, you settle down a little bit. You're able to slow the game back down. And I think that's what, you know, John Carl is going to do. You know, he got a taste of the wild card game, hit a big homer for us there, played in the DS, had some big hits there. And I think he's just going to, you know, now it's just another game. And he's been in this game now for eight, nine years. He's he's going to be ready. You know, I'm excited for him. He's going to have a big, I know he missed a lot of time this year in the regular season, but he's going to come through big for us. Because, you know, just what I've been seeing in the cages, seeing in the past in the games, you know, a couple of games in Texas, you know, how he's hammering the ball, the, his approach to the plate has been rock solid. Looks like he hasn't even missed a game. Looks like he's, you know, been playing, you know, since uh, since March. You know, so um, I, I think, you know, just getting those couple games, getting the atmosphere, and we'll just, he'll be ready for the postseason. Okay, Jack, to your left, Aaron. Aaron, knowing that uh, batters tinker and tweak with their swings every day, you mentioned earlier your disdain for ground balls across the last five weeks of the season. You went from about hitting the ball on the ground almost half the time, cutting that down to about a third of the time. How did you make that adjustment? How did you get more more lift into the ball? It's tough to say. It's a constant, constant progress, constant work, constant grind with me, you know, working on stuff in the cage. You know, I ne never, never get satisfied, you know. So um, I can't really put it to one thing that I'd really change, you know, because I'm always tinkering with things. So I can't really say if, you know, stance, approach, you know, it's usually my stance and everything's been the same. You know, usually it's just approach about just, you know, just trying to do more damage on certain pitches. You know, even though I, you know, try to walk a lot or, you know, try to get on base, you know, I've been trying to, you know, just go up there and do damage, you know, each and, each and every single pitch, you know, especially with the type of lineup we have. Um, when DJ is getting on base, I feel like every single time he gets up there, uh, you know, I'm in, always in a good opportunity, always with guys on base, you know, so I just kind of try to do a little bit more damage. Okay, Jennifer. Aaron, being in New York City, you're able to um, see the Latino influence, the Latino culture a lot, particularly with the New York Yankees. How do you see that impact? You mentioned Glaber, um, but how do you see the Latino impact in, in, in this team? We saw MLB release the, the promo video, the hype re, uh, video, with a lot of that influence. Can you talk on that? Yeah. Um, well, especially here in the Bronx, you know, there's a big Latino culture, and I feel like, you know, if there's any way we can impact those kids and get them, you know, show the kids that, you know, there's an escape route, you know, escape route out of, uh, you know, bad situations, you know, through baseball. You know, that's one thing I've always seen is baseball and sports is a learning lesson and a learning tool. And, um, you know, if we can show those kids, you know, how much fun this game is and, you know, here in New York, man, I feel like that's the biggest thing. That's bigger than the game, you know, just impacting kids' lives and giving them something to cheer for, giving them something to do, getting something to look forward to. So, uh, you know, especially when they see Glaber Torres hitting homers here in the DS and Gary Sanchez hitting homers here, man, it's going to pump some kids up and, you know, hopefully turn, you know, some future kids in, here in the Bronx, you know, to, you know, future Yankees. Okay. Eric? Aaron, you've played two Octobers here now. How would you describe Yankee Stadium in the playoffs, the atmosphere? First, first thing that comes to mind is electric, but that doesn't even – that doesn't even define it, I don't think. You know, just just from the pregame stuff to the, you can feel the, you know, it's a little brisk here. It's, you know, the weather's cooling off. And all of a sudden you're lined up for the national anthem and you look out in the stands and you can't even hear the last half of the anthem because the fans start getting crazy and getting loud. And, you know, you feel like you're floating out there when you're warming up and stretching. And it's just, I honestly don't even know how to describe it. I think you guys have asked me this a couple of times now, but. It's just electric, man. This, this the city, the, the stadium becomes it comes alive when those fans fill it up, and man, you, I can feel. I feel like some of the ghosts from you know, Yankees past are here with us, you know. Whenever you know, that stadium gets rocking, so uh, that's why I, I can't I can't wait for uh, you know the game tomorrow night. And I've already been watching, you know, film my last year's wild card game, the 2017 wild card game, and just can't wait, can't wait. Okay, we'll take one more, Dan. What are you trying to pick up watching those games? Is it, is, do you just want to relive the the memories, or are you trying to learn things from the from your past experiences? It's it's a mix of all that. You know, I like looking at you know past at bats, but the most part, I'm just the energy. That's what, that's what I'm feeding off of. Is you can just, especially in 17, we got down early. 
you know, the crowd stayed in it and also watching DD's, you know, home run repeat, you know, watching the crowd get electric and back into it. You know, I love watching that. You know, I love watching the 17, us getting up early and our pitchers dominating and, you know, just the fans feeding off that, us feeding off the fans, just, just everything about it. You know, it just getting excited for October baseball. This is the regular season. You know, they can say that 162 is the regular season, but that's, that's spring training. You know, this is, this is when it all counts. This is when it matters. And, you know, first one to 11. So um, it's, it's going to be some fun. Great. Aaron, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.